All right, Korean baby for the fifth, we have the skeleton of Henry Jones. The skeleton of Henry Jones is just a lot of funny bones, a skull, some teeth, and in between two sockets where his eyes have been. It hasn't any skin or hair, no crinkly whiskers anywhere. What was he like? We'll never know. He lived 200 years ago. All right, the next one we're going to do is the sly little horse. Once upon a time in a barnyard, there was a, a shy little horse. So this is a shy little horse. Every time he heard anyone coming, he ran away. Not so the donkey, not so the pig. The only gray donkey rolled his eyes and lowered his head, put forward his ears, and then trotted over to see who the visitor was. And the old fat pig, if she wasn't eating, wallowed over to the side of her pen and greeted at the visitors. But the little horse was shy. He galloped away and his mother galloped with him to the far end of the field. Then one day a visitor came to the barnyard. The visitor was a tall man with, mu with a mustache. The donkey saw him coming and ran to the fence and stuck forward his leg, ears, and rolled his big brown jack rabbit eyes. But the visitor didn't pay any attention to the donkey. The old pig blinked at him and the chickens scratched about as though there were only chickens in the barnyard. But the visitor didn't even see the old pig and the chickens. The visitor was looking at the shy little horse and the shy little horse was lowering his head and keeping up his heels and galloped away. Now the visitor had come just to see the shy little horse, but every time the man got near him, the horse kicked up his head and away he flew across the field and his mother galloped with him and stayed by his side. But the tall man with the mustache knew a lot about the shy little horse, so he just went and leaned against the fence and whistled away to himself and didn't look at the shy little horse anymore. Now the funny little horse saw the man do this and he heard him whistling. The shy little horse lowered his head and nibbled the green grass. The man moved and kept on whistling. The shy little horse kicked up his heels and ran further down the field and nibbled some more grass and peeked at the man. The man didn't move and kept on whistling. Then the shy little horse nibbled some grass nearer the man. The man didn't move and kept on whistling. What a funny man, thought the shy little horse. Why doesn't he chase me and try to get me in a corner and put a halter on my head? The man didn't move and kept on whistling. And by this time, the little horse was so curious he was nearly popping inside. He had never seen a man like this before. All the other men had chased him into a corner and caught him and put a halter on his head. He was quite near the man now, and he stood there, nearly a leap away and a gallop. And to the far ends of the fields, the man didn't move and kept on whistling. The shy little horse nosed nearer and nearer. The whistling tickled his ears on a way that he liked, and he liked the man to stand so still he couldn't get a good look at him. Then the man moved just a tiny little bit and uncurled his fingers, and on the palm of his hands were two square lumps of sugar. The shy little horse's mother stepped nearer to the man, almost right up to him, and the man didn't move and kept on whistling. This was a wonderful thing. The mother horse stepped right up to the man and buried her nose in his hand and took the lump of sugar and stepped back and chewed it. Then she stepped up and took the other lump of sugar. The man didn't move and kept on whistling. Then after a while he walked out of the field the way he had come 
and went away. See the man and the little boy? The next day he came back and stood there whistling, and he gave the mother horse another lump of sugar. The third day, when he came, he walked right over to the mother horse and put a halter over her head and gave her a lump of sugar. Then he led her to the field, and the shy little horse followed after, close to his mother's side. The man led the mother horse and the shy little horse right down the road, where the little horse had never been before. Way down the road, they went until they came to a small dirt road. The man turned up the dirt road, and the shy little horse, brand new hooves, didn't make clacking noises anymore in the dirt. They just made soft little thuds. They went up the dirt road to the long white house with a big white stable with green doors and windows. And out from the house came the shy little boy and looked at the shy little horse. For the tall man with the mustache was the father of the shy little boy. And he had brought the shy little horse for the shy little boy's very own. The little boy's mother came out of the house and said what a beautiful young horse it was. And the little boy said, Some day I will ride him. It wasn't so long before the shy little boy had taught the shy little horse to eat sugar out of his own hand. The shy little horse and the shy little boy grew up together, and it wasn't long, maybe a year or two, for there was plenty of time before the little boy had grown old enough to ride the shy little horse, and the shy little horse had grown large enough to carry the little boy on his back. They rode all over the country, the boy and his horse, and after a while, they, were even, they weren't even shy anymore. They jumped fences and galloped across the, the grassy fields. Oh, let's take a look at the last photo. That was a cute story. <sighs> Karina, baby, I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to see you. I'm so sorry I'm not there with you in person to read you these books in person. I would be if I could, like, if, if I could be, I would be. I miss you and I love you. Let's do... Oh, the grand old Duke of York had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and then he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up, and when they were down, they were down, and when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Karina, baby, I love you, and I miss you, and I constantly pray for you. I never forgot about you, not even for a moment, baby. I'll never forget about you. You're my baby. Mamas always remember their babies no matter what. I love you, and I miss you, honey.